Good morning! We have woken up to yet another miserable day. It has been pouring it down with rain yesterday afternoon and the forecast today is I think it's like 99% rain all day long. Heavy rain with a bit of a storm, wind speeds of about 40 miles an hour. <laughs> I'm probably not going to be able to film much today but I'll do what I can. But we stayed in an Airbnb last night and have walked down to back to down to the um, coastal path here and got back onto the Cleveland Way. So I think we added about another mile onto our walk this morning <laughs> just by where we stayed last night. But it was a nice warm up. And what we have done is walked up the famous 199 steps up to St Mary's Church, which is quite a high point in Whitby. And Whitby, if you don't know, it's quite famous back in the day for whaling, shipbuilding, I think they even built Captain Cook's ship here, and also the jet trade. So nowadays it is more, I think the revenue comes from tourism mainly, but there is a lot of jet sold here. And I think jet is the product of wood at very high pressure or something like that but this is still the, the most famous place to come and get your, your jet. It's lo known locally as the your Whitby jet. So that's where we are at the moment. But Whitby as well is also famous for Bram Stoker's setting for Dracula. And they hold goth weekends and all kinds of things here, which is quite funny. But I'm not gonna be able to show you around. We tried to do a little clip on the phone earlier when we crossed over the bridge, but I think we're going to have to come back at some point and film these days properly when the weather's not so bad. But we did about 20 miles yesterday, so we arrived over in Whitby and today we're heading to Scarborough which is about another 20 mile day, not including the extra mile we did this morning. And we're heading to a famous little bay called Robin Hood's Bay, I think that's about 7 miles from here, and then we carry on and eventually get to Scarborough but I think a lot of it unfortunately is going to be head down and plod on but I promise I will try my best and show you what we can along the way. <laughs> so how are we feeling this morning? <laughs> Marvellous. <laughs> are we feeling up for this nice coastal walk with all the rain? No, yes. <laughs> <laughs> we managed to get some vegan pasties though yesterday so we've got them in our lunchbox today. <laughs> But I'm gonna, I'm gonna sneak out quickly and show you the ruins over there before the camera gets too destroyed. Ooh. So you can see Whitby Abbey in the distance over here. There you go, there's a bit of Whitby Abbey. <laughs> and where I've just been sheltering is here at St Mary's Church. There you go, and the lens is going already. But yes, yeah, so we're on our way. <laughs> Off we go. <laughs> <laughs> and look what we've got. We've got some higgledy piggledy steps down here to walk up later as well. And a river crossing. Oh yeah, and a river crossing. <laughs> certainly having an exhilarating walk here on the coastline. We are nearly at Robin Hood's Bay and I just had to stop and show you this. There's so many little waterfalls coming off the cliffs here. It has been fascinating to watch. We haven't seen a lot of wildlife. We've seen lots of gulls and fulmers, a couple of rabbits and sheep, but apart from that, you're not missing too much apart from a lot of muddy puddles. Robin Hood's Bay is infamous for its role in the smuggling trade between 1700 and 1850. The actual
actual origin of the name remains a mystery. There is not a scrap of evidence to suggest that Robin Hood of Sherwood Forest folklore visited the bay. We walk along the cliffs to Ness Point, which has been the downfall of so many a sailor and fisherman. So notorious was the headland that Robin Hood's Bay ran its own lifeboat service until a Royal National Lifeboat Institution station was set up in 1881. It operated until 1931, rescuing a total of 91 people in its 50 years of service. The curiously named Rocket Post Field is a reminder of those days. The post in this field is a replica of one of those that was once used to practice cliff rescues. A rocket with a rope attached was fired from the post to a stranded ship, and the survivors would then return to safety via the breeches buoy, a pair of large canvas shorts and a life buoy hanging from the rope. The crew of the steam cargo ship Heatherfield was rescued in this way in 1936, including the captain clutching his pet canary. At Robin Hood's Bay, the houses are clustered so closely together that they appear to be nesting on the cliff edge. It is said that a bale of silk could pass from the bottom of the village to the top without leaving the houses. We're just walking into Robin Hood's Bay and this is something you don't see in the guidebooks. In the 18th century, Robin Hood's Bay was reportedly the busiest smuggling community on the Yorkshire coast. Its natural isolation, protected by marshy moorland on three sides, offered a natural aid to this well-organised business, which, despite its dangers, must have paid better than fishing. Fierce battles ensued between smugglers and excisemen, and bay wives were known to pour boiling water over excisemen from bedroom windows in the narrow alleyways. We're in Yorkshire now. You've got to pay for tap water. <laughs> Not that I mind, because it's for Yorkshire Air Ambulance. <laughs> and here we go, back onto the Cleveland Way and along to the bay. Here we go. Nice sunny Britain. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> there's a nice cream van there as well, look on the right. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think they are blueberries? Well, I don't know. Is that a joke? Another knot! <laughs> you have to try one of them. No, thank you. <laughs> they look just sure, they look just like blueberries. <laughs> oh! <laughs> <laughs> Go on, try one. No. <laughs> what do you think they are? <laughs> Mine looks alright. Mine looks like a. Hey, that's that one. That's a raspberry. <laughs> or a black... mm. No, that's a blackberry. That was nice. Cheap. <laughs> <laughs> that was awful. I have to find out what they are. Why don't we have another one in case that was no. a bad one? <laughs> <laughs> Between all the cliffs we keep coming all the way down these stairs, across little bridges and then up high stairs again. But this one's got these plants in the water that I've never seen before. It looks so green and normally the water's flowing through and then going into the sea but this seems to have settled. But these look quite cool. That's really unusual. <laughs> so bright in contrast to the rest of the coast. We are now heading up to the Alum Works. This site of the former Alum Works is considered one of the first sites of the world's first chemical industry. We decided to actually shelter at <laughs> the Alum Works. The heavens have just opened and the wind is so bad. It's been really crazy this afternoon. Um, I'm probably just gonna have to put the camera away. It's been that bad, but we're at the Allen Works and we have got Raven Scar right in front of us. 
and then it's onwards to Scarborough from there onwards. <laughs> it's just a matter of holding on tight to the um, the cliff paths, but we're doing all right. We're still in high spirits, aren't we? <laughs> yeah. Um. <laughs> we didn't expect. I mean, we knew the weather would be bad, but it's just oh, it's just hard to film. I think that's the problem. But it has been a beautiful walk and I'm going to try and zoom in up to Raven's Scar to show you that because I'm just going to put the camera away for a while and I'll hopefully speak to you later. We've just dumped our bags in our hotel room and we thought we'll come straight down to the seafront, get some food and then go warm up. So, see you tomorrow! 